Hi, this is Rita Teresa with One Inspiring Woman, and today is a very interesting national day. Hi, my name is Ruth Teresa with One Inspiring Woman. I'm an intuitive psychic medium here in the Sugarland area. That's just outside of Houston. I work with my angels and guides to assist my clients in many areas of their lives, to bring them special messages from loved ones who have passed, to dialogue with their angels for guidance into their own situation, or to assist them with their own psychic abilities. If you like my content, please make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. That's right, December 8th is National Pretend to Be a Time Traveler Day. And I know so many people have an interest in this. I think that's one of the things that I love about time travel is uh, connecting with other people. But we have so many shows and sitcoms and books and movies about time travel. Um, just to name a few, um, Doctor Who and uh, Quantum Leap and uh, there's so many others. It's one of those. And then you also have that um, in sitcoms today that someone went back in time or fixed things. Um, even um, uh, A Christmas Carol, they go back in time and kind of see what was happening during that time frame and how he felt and how he thought about things. So that's kind of like a really interesting one that a lot of people really have a great interest in because it's one of those we can have so many connections to our past lives and they can resonate with what's going on in our current life, which is really fun and interesting to understand because things that happen back there, not always, but a lot of times they're connected to us. Fears that we had back then can, can give us fears today. Things that we were afraid of back then can make us afraid right now. So that's kind of the, the creepy cool part about it is kind of like, what was going on back there and why do I have this fear of whatever it is? Why do I have a fear of, of um, falling off a cliff? Well, that could be in a past life, you fell off a cliff and died or injured yourself and then died from your injuries. Um, you could have a fear of um, claustrophobia. Um, you could have been um, incarcerated um, in a past life. You could have been put on a ship where you couldn't leave this confined space uh, for months or even years on end. And that can kind of bring up stuff from the past. And so you could still bring that forward into this life of being claustrophobic. I don't want to be in a closet. I don't want to be tied up or I don't want to be um, enclosed in small places. And that's kind of an interesting phenomena for most people um, to be able to see that. Now, a few of us me included, um, are able to see past lives. It's one of the things that can overwhelm me when I meet new people is I can see their past lives and which past lives they're still connected to and the past lives that are kind of like haven't really let go or they have really a lot of fears or a lot of things went wrong in that life and they brought them all into this life. I often tell my clients, it's almost like for me, Sunday is the new week. That's the new week for me. And so anything that I didn't finish the week before kind of goes into the new week. If I didn't finish it Saturday, it's going to go into Sunday. Like dirty clothes. Didn't finish washing all the clothes. It's going to come into Sunday. We're going to keep going. But a lot of people do that with past lives as well. well. You already have like your whole agenda for your lifetime of everything that you're supposed to accomplish. But there are things in your past life. And so then you bring those in and you're like, now I'm going to deal with this on top of everything else I'm supposed to deal with people get overwhelmed easy. They have a lot of anxiety and stress and I can't do this or if they're asking too much of me or they kind of just go into shutdown mode like it's too much, I can't deal with this. That can be really overwhelming and it can be overwhelming not only for that person but the people around them because it's like she's always putting more things on her plate or he's always doing, going, going, going. What is that energy of how do we deal with one thing at a time and how do we kind of sever some of those past lives are really, really great questions to ask. Um, and, but they're always connected to us in some sort of way. Now, kind of the quirkiness about me um, is I can also dream in someone else's past life or I can have a daydream in someone else's past life and see what that past life looked like. Um, I see it kind of strangely through their eyes, like what they're looking at, I'm looking at. Um, but it's really fun and interesting to go to different places that you've never been before and kind of like, what does it feel like? What does the energy of the land feel like? What's around me? Is it out in the country or is it in a city? Um, is it on a ship or is it, you know, uh, you know, on a ferry? Whatever it is, it's like, 
what are that energy? What is that energy that you can connect to and seeing it through their lives and seeing where they got stuck on stuff and how they were trying to work through it in that life. And sometimes maybe they passed too early and they weren't able to release it. Maybe it was overwhelming and they kind of were just afraid and that just kind of stayed with them. And they bring that, just like the laundry, into the next life and into the next life until they are able to work through it. And that's kind of the fun, cool part to be able to assist people in working through all of that. One of the things I often tell people is about going into past life or kind of being a time traveler is who were you in that life? Did you work? Did you stay at home? Did you have a job? Did you have a business? What is it? Um, where in the world did you live? What, when did you live? Um, what time frame are you looking at? Is it the 1300s, the 1400s? Kind of where's all that energy coming in at? What are they dressed like? How are they dealing with their environment around them? Um, um, who did you know in that life? Who did you know in that life? Was it a small community or was it a huge, large city and you knew a lot of people? Um, kind of like, were you the mayor of the town so a lot of people knew you? Or were you someone who just kind of like stayed away from everybody else? Like, who were you in that life and who did you know in that life? The really cool part is opening up into the insights of what that person felt. How did they feel about that life? Um, did they have regrets at the end? Like, I wish I'd have been more open or I wish I'd have been able to make friends easier. Or, I wish I'd been able to do this. That's kind of that great insight. Um, when you look into someone else's past life of kind of like, where's that energy coming from? Why are they so open now? Cause they were closed in the, in the past. Um, sometimes it's kind of like that insight of what would you change or fix or modify? Um, would you still be in the same relationship with the same person? Would you go, that was not a good relationship for me? Or would you say, no, I think I'm going to start it again. I think I'm going to retry this. All of that is very positive, very open, very fun energy to give us some different insights into being a time traveler and seeing um, the world at different times and not just kind of like a global look at it, kind of like on a TV show or um, an informational thing, but it's like walking in their feet and their shoes like, how did they feel about it? How did they feel about what was going on around them? Did they feel scared or excited? Um, were they unsure of what was going to happen next? That's the fun part. I think that's totally the fun part to kind of get that insight. But at the same time, you also have people that have the ability to see ghosts in past lives. And sometimes ghosts, when they pass, um, they um, don't always pass over and kind of leave earth. Sometimes they will get stuck in a um, time loop and they'll keep going through that. So for them, it's still the year that they passed. They're still going through that loop. They, everybody else around them is kind of like move forward, but they're staying in that same loop over and over and over again. So that's an interesting one when you connect with the ghosts like that. Sometimes they have um, an intelligence so you can communicate with them and sometimes they don't, but that's kind of the fun, cool part about it is kind of what was our insight? What was our life like? Um, sometimes when you connect to ghosts that have been gone for a long, long period of time, it's kind of like you get to live their life with them. What did they think was important? What um, was their information? Um, how did they feel about things that were going on? Um, I think um, the Civil War is one that I really kind of love to connect to a lot of ghosts with because they didn't know how things were going to end. They didn't know who was going to win and who was going to lose and how is that going to change the world. That's kind of the really cool part to get their insight. Um, and I met with a lot of people that, that that fought in that war, and it's really interesting to get their insight. Um, along with um, a lot of other wars, um, but I would say like World War One. You know, did they understand what they were fighting for? Did they understand what was going on? Um, it's one of those and going to the battlefields and where they they fought and where they died and what were their last thoughts as they passed away. Um, uh, sometimes it's of their buddies and friends and sometimes it's family. So it really is interesting. World War II, where those were fought, where was that energy? Um, how did they feel about what was going on in the world? How did they feel about what was happening? Um, even into uh, Desert Storm and Afghanistan, and all of those, it's kind of like that energy stays. Every time there's a war, the energy stays until you clear it up enough, until you get rid of that old, old, old inner energy. And that's the really cool part. And then you can go into the same questions with the ghost of um, who were they in that world? What did they do for a living? Where in the world were they raised? 
How were they raised? In a city, in the desert, um, next to the beach? Where? How were they raised? Who were the, their parents? What did their parents do? What did they do for a living? Um, who did they know and other people that might be famous now that weren't famous then? And then kind of what insights could they give you? What are the things that they would kind of pass on? Like, this is something that I would love to pass the baton on to you. And what is this energy about? And how do I deal with this? That's the really cool part and to really understand them. So one of the things I love about teaching my Psychic 101 classes is introducing people and how to connect to their past lives. It's much easier than you could possibly imagine, but it's really, really fun to see that for yourself. Where were your hangups? Where were your issues? What was your life like? How did you deal with things? And do you have any familiars? Do you have anybody who's in your life today who was in that past? past life because a lot of people reincarnate together so your dad in this life could be your son in a previous life your mom in this life could be your aunt in a previous life so that's really cool to kind of get that energy and that can also kind of talk about like how you're energetically connect to them in this life so that can be really fun and cool i love past lives so i could talk about it forever but let's do some angel cards and hopefully get us a little bit deeper into um, all things national pretend um, <clears throat> to be a time traveler day. <coughs> okay. Romance. Like I said, it's kind of interesting to go into a past life and see who you were married to. See what, what went right in a marriage and what went wrong in a marriage. And then who is that person in your life today? And how has that relationship evolved since then? Have you gotten better with boundaries or had they gotten better with boundaries? Are they a great communicator now where they really were not good at it before? But it's really great. And then to see those people and connect with them, not only on this level of this life, but other lives as well. It kind of just adds a depth to every relationship we're in, especially if they're a romantic relationship. That one was popping and now this one's popping. Divine timing. That's the best part of every one of your lives have been designed to help you learn life lessons. Everything has been learn is about that. Life lessons. What are you learning? How are you dealing with links? How are you working through things? How are you dealing with this part? How are you dealing with that part? That's the really cool part because that divine timing of the life lessons. And when you get in this life, and you realize like, wow, I've had so many other past lives. What can I learn from them? That's divine timing too. That's a divine timing thing as well. So that you can start working through and letting go of things that no longer serve you um, or things that no longer help you. It's one of those, it's great to know when you're a kid that you shouldn't cross the street. Um, but when you're 30 years old, you should know how to cross the street properly. So you learn something different. Surrender and release. There are so many things surrender and release about this. Um, learning about your past lives can be something you can kind of surrender into and just kind of release, kind of like understanding where I was stuck in the past and where I choose not to be stuck now or things that held me back. Um, I'm not going to do that anymore. And I always think um, in a way it's kind of like going back to um, younger. If you're over the age of 30 and you go back to yourself and you talk to yourself in high school, the things that you thought at that time frame, you'll be like, oh my gosh, you're, you're crazy. This is wrong. Or you're right up the alley and this is the way it is. Or the popular people thinking like, oh my gosh, these people are so popular. They don't have any better lives than anybody else. Um, it's one of those, the people that you were thinking, oh, they're losers. They become winners. Everything is dependent on you and what you bring into the picture. And it doesn't have anything to do with anything else, but holding on to that energy like, oh, because they're this family or that family, they're going to be popular. They're going to be wealthy or whatever else. Sometimes that changes completely and it can changes in a blink of an eye in a family history. Um, <clears throat> so one person will be very wealthy and then the next generation blows it all on something. And then the family is poor again and just knowing like, hey, I need to be careful with my money or I overspend at times. So then I'm aware of that so I can surrender to that energy and bring that forward to bring it into a new healed state for myself and my family as well. Maybe I'm a person that saves and saves and saves, but I never got to do anything with the savings. 
I was saved up for the trip of a lifetime, but I never got to go. So maybe I would do smaller trips or do things of like, these are the trips that I would really want to go on and eventually um, go on those trips and, and enjoy my life and not just work, 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 work constantly. That's the really cool part, I think. I thank you so much for joining me today, and I know that we'll be talking again soon.